Hey, Daisy Ray. Hey, Ray. Oh, are you getting up on the couch? Hi, hi guys. It's time for reading with Ray. The Ray is not going to turn around and look at us. Hi, baby. Here she is. It's time for Ivy and Bean. Um, and Rogue is here as well. Hi, Rogue. So it is time to for reading with Ray. And we're going to read Ivy and Bean. Oh, she's settling in to listen. Or maybe take a nap. All right. But, but I'm here. Hi, guys. I'm Renee. I'm the Children's Librarian at Salem Public Library in Salem, Ohio. And this is Reading with Ray, our virtual book club for kids in kindergarten to third grade. And we are currently reading Ivy and Bean Break the Fossil Record, which is book three in the Ivy and Bean series. And this book is by Annie Barrows, illustrated by Sophie Blackall, and published by Chronicle Kids. So thanks to all of them for allowing us to share this book this way. Um, let's see where we left off yesterday. Uh, Ivy and Bean's teacher had given Bean a book of world records, and then her and Ivy decided they, well, Bean more than Ivy, decided they wanted to break a world record and get in the world record book. So they, tr they tried the straw thing, and she tried sh um, screaming loud enough to break a glass, and that got her in trouble with her dad, so they got banished outside, so they decided to dig for a dinosaur. So now they are digging in Bean's backyard for a dinosaur bone, and they, they think they found a bone. So I think it's probably a bone that was buried by a dog or something like that, but maybe it's a dinosaur. So we're going to read and find out. Um, before, real quick before I start reading. Uh, oh, I'm going to sneeze. <coughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um... Anyways, uh, the library is is still closed in that you can't come in the library to um, get books or do anything like that, but you can get books. So if you need stuff, uh, get a hold of us, go on our website and put holds on materials that you're interested in, or give us a call and we can get some stuff ready for you. And then you can come to the library and pick it up. Um, there's a whole post on our Facebook page and our website on how to do that whole process or just give us a call and talk to us. Uh, we can get you all set up to do that so you can get some fresh books at home. Um, I know a lot of you are probably very tired of reading off of screens. Digital is great and we can get a lot of access that way, but it's just not quite the same as actually having a book in your hands. And I say that, but I am actually using the digital versions of both of my book club books today. Um, well, partly because at the moment I'm kind of going back and forth between the library and home. Uh, depending on the day and what's going on um, and just you know in an effort to try to be as safe as possible I'm working from home quite a bit but I left my books at the library yesterday um, so I'm doing the digital versions today which I don't like nearly as much but it does work and Rogue likes it because I can scratch his head while I'm while I'm reading I don't have to hang on to a book uh, so let's get started. Ivy and Bean break the fossil record. Um, I don't know the chapter number, but this is the chapter name is Ivy Beanosaur. They dug for half an hour without finding any more bones. Bean was on the edge of giving up. She figured that one bone was a lot more than most people found, but then she thought of Mary Anning. Chip, chip, chipping for a year. She didn't want to be wimpier than Mary Anning or Ivy. So she dug and dug. Ivy's nose was running and she had mud all over her. Also, her feet had gone to sleep from being kneeled on, but she didn't give up either. She combed through each new load of dirt with her fingers, feeling for bones. She found a lot of rocks. She found a marble. She found a piece of blue plastic. Then her finger, fingers burrowing into the mud like worms plucked out another bone. This one was shorter and thicker, but it was definitely a bone. I got another one, she called. Bean dropped down beside her and looked at the gray-brown lump. We rock, she said. No, we fossil, giggled Ivy. She dusted the bone carefully and put it next to the first one. We can put them together later, she said. Well, how do you put them together if you don't know which dinosaur it is? Asked Bean. It's like a puzzle, I think. You look for pieces that fit together, said Ivy. We can look in dinosaur books, too, so it's a lot easier for us than for Mary Anning. She didn't have any pictures to look at, but she remembered Mary Anning found the whole ichthyosaur, so she didn't need to put it together. 
It's sort of cheating to find to find the whole thing, said Bean. Oh man, here's a big one. She fished around in the dirt and pulled out a thick, heavy bone. It was a very serious looking bone. Bean held it up. It reached from her hand to her elbow. That's, I guess, I mean, Bean probably has shorter arms than I do since I'm a grown up, but that's pretty big. Bean held it. Oh, she whistled. This is no little cute dinosaur. This is a big, scary dinosaur. What if that's just its little finger? said Ivy dreamily. Monstrosaur, said Bean. Ivy Beanosaur, said Ivy. You're supposed to name them after the person who discovered them. Bean giggled. Then her shovel hit something hard. Another bone appeared. This one, smooth and rounded. Whoa, Nellie, cried Bean. I think I got a piece of its skull. Did they really find a dinosaur in the backyard? Bean's father called her in for dinner. Bean washed off most of the dirt and sat down at the dining room table. She smiled, thinking about the dinosaur skeleton she and Ivy were going to build. They were totally awesome. They would probably be on TV. Her parents would have to let her watch TV if she was on it. Bean noticed that Nancy was sneering at her. She was still mad about the octopus. I ever catch you looking at one of my glass animals again, you'll be sorry, Nancy hissed while their father served up their pasta. What am I supposed to do? Put a blindfold on when I go into your room? You're not supposed to go into my room, said Nancy, because it's my room. Daddy, can I get a lock on my door? No, said Dad, bringing in their bowls. Bean stared at her pasta. It looked funny, but she decided not to say so. This pasta looks weird, said Nancy. That's what I thought, but I didn't say it, said Bean. Mom says if you can't say something nice about your food, you shouldn't say anything at all. Nancy lifted one eyebrow and said, Little children who break dishes, steal other people's stuff, and screech their brains out have no right to talk about what other people do. Ooh. Yeah, Bean really wasn't very well behaved today. How about if we don't talk at all for a little while, suggested Dad. Fine with me, said Nancy. Me too, said Bean. So she didn't tell them anything about the amazing dinosaur find in the backyard. Serves them right, she thought. I'll be the youngest paleontologist in the world and they won't even know it. All right, new chapter, believe it or not. Breaking a world record is harder than it looks, said Emma the next day at recess. The second graders who had gathered around the amazing book of world records the day before were huddled under the play structure again without the book. I could get two spoons stuck on my cheeks, no problem, Emma went on. And for a second, I got three, but that's all. I wish the book said how the kid did it. Did you try your nose, asked Drew. Sure, I tried my nose, Emma said. It slid right off. Maybe he has a very sticky face, said Ivy. Maybe even put something on his face to make it sticky. Maybe, said Emma, but forget it. I'm tired of trying to put spoons on my face. There was a silence. Bean didn't want to be a braggy kid. Everyone hates braggy kids. She would wait to tell it about the dinosaur bones until someone else told about breaking a record. How'd the cartwheels go? She asked Zuzu. Super great, said Zuzu. You did it, asked Ivy. 111 cartwheels. Everyone looked impressed. Wow, that's great. Are you going to be in the book? Zuzu pulled the zipper on her jacket down and up. I didn't do 111 cartwheels. I did 32. She looked around at the faces watching her. That's a lot. I set the record for Emerson School for sure. 32 cartwheels is a lot. I, the most I ever did was one. There was a short silence while everyone thought about that. Then Bean said, did you fall down or what? <sighs> I crashed into a fence, said Zuzu. Got a bunch of splinters. Ow. She held up her knee. It looked like she had pepper under her skin. Ouch. Ouch, said Ivy. She hated splinters. If my backyard was a mile long, I bet I could have done it, said Zuzu. That seems like that would be the, the necessary thing to break a record. Like that would be a long enough space to do 111 cartwheels. Eric's not at school today, said Vanessa. I wonder if he ate 500 M&Ms. He didn't, said Doucet. He ate 112, and then he threw up. But 112 is hardly anything. 
He didn't choose to seduce it. He just poured them down his throat. Oh, not a good idea. Yuck, said Emma. That's gross. His mom is really mad, said Deuce it glumly. She took the rest of his money away. What about you, Bean? asked Vanessa. Did you get all those straws in your mouth? Straws? Bean had almost forgotten straws. Oh, no. But Ivy and I broke another record. How many did you get in? asked Zuzu. What? Oh, 44. But guys, said Bean, Ivy and I broke another record yesterday afternoon. She stopped and waited. Well, said Vanessa, what record? We became the youngest paleontologists in the world. There was a little pause. What's a paleontologist? Asked Drew. A person who digs up dinosaur bones, said Bean, and that's what we did. We dug 17 dinosaur bones out of my backyard yesterday, and today we're going to get more, and then we're going to put them together and make a dinosaur skeleton. Nobody said anything. Isn't that cool, said Bean. What was the matter with them? You did not, said Deucet finally. We did too, cried Bean. 17 dinosaur bones? No way, said Emma. Yes way, said Bean firmly. Zuzu and Emma gave each other a look. Bean felt her face get hot. People don't just find dinosaur bones, said Vanessa in a grown-up voice. Dinosaur bones aren't just lying around. Sometimes they are, said Ivy. That's how Mary Anning found them. Until yesterday, Mary Anning was the youngest paleontologist in the world, said Bean, trying again. Now, Ivy and I are. You can't just say you broke a record and get in the book, said Vanessa. You have to prove it. We can prove it, said Ivy. Her face was getting a little pink, too. We have the bones. What do you guys think? 17 bones in, in Bean's backyard? I just, I'm still not believing this. All right, what do you think, Ray? Oh, she's over here. What do you think? Dinosaur bones or dog bones? Yeah, I think a puppy buried him. Yep, probably a bigger puppy than you, though. I don't think she could bury a bone as big as a forearm. She's not very big. All right. How do we know that they're not chicken bones you stuck in the ground yourself, Vanessa said. Oh, I hadn't thought about that. They could be. They're not chicken bones. They're big. You can come over and see them if you don't believe us, said Bean. Okay, said Vanessa, I will. In fact, you can all come over, said Bean. I invite all of you over for a dinosaur bone viewing. So there. Fine. When, said Emma. You can come this afternoon, Bean decided. But don't come early because Ivy and I have paleontology to do. You better come and see them today, said Ivy. When they're in the museum, you'll have to pay. Come on, Bean. They turned their backs on the play structure and walked toward the classroom. Oh, new chapter. Oh, we got time for one more chapter. A bone to pick. Bean could hardly wait for the end of the day. Finally, Ms. Aruba Tate said, put up your chairs, boys and girls. But just like she always did, Bean and Ivy put up their chairs, wham, wham, and hurried out of the classroom. Wait, you guys. Leo ran down the breezeway and stood in front of them. They waited. Did you really? He said. What? Said Ivy in a huffy voice. Find dinosaur bones. He looked at them with narrow eyes. Bean's face got hot again. Leo was their friend, and friends believed you. He shouldn't think they were lying. It made her mad. Yes, we did, she yelled, and we have proof. Anyone who doesn't believe us can come over and see. Four o'clock today. My house, dinosaurs. She glared at Leo. Bring everyone you know. Bring your stupid soccer team. I don't care. Jeez, said Leo, lighten up. Excuse me, said Ivy in a still huffy voice. We have work to do. She pulled Bean by the arm. A skinny first grader plucked at her jacket when she reached the stairs. I, I heard you found dinosaur bones, he said. Yes, we did, said Bean in a loud voice. We found dinosaur bones. He looked at her nervously. Can I see them? Oh, Bean had been ready for a fight. She tried to make her face into a smile as she told the kid where she lived. Come by later this afternoon, she said. Okay, he smiled. Can I bring my mom? Bring anyone you want. As they walked home, Ivy said, nobody believed Mary Anning either. They thought that the bones were just weird rocks. They told her to stop wasting her time. But in the end, she was right. Who cares what other people think? 
being stepped over a crack in the sidewalk. I do. I want other people to know I'm right, especially when I really am right. Ivy thought for a moment. But you're still right, even if they don't think so. I guess, Bean sighed. I just feel better if other people think I'm right, too. Hardly anybody ever thinks I'm right, said Ivy. Bean nodded. That was true. A lot of people didn't understand Ivy's ideas. She had plenty of practice at not being believed, and that's probably why she didn't get as mad about it as Bean did. She just went ahead with her ideas anyway. You can do whatever you want if you don't care what people think, Bean realized. But you have to do it alone a lot of the time. Yeah, I guess that's pretty true, actually. They climbed the stairs to Bean's front porch. We need a good snack, said Bean. We have lots of digging to do. A great big snack, agreed Ivy. What do you have? Trail mix, said Bean, the kind with chocolate chips. Cool, we can eat it while we dig. We should be kind of quiet, Bean added. I think my dad is still a little grumpy from yesterday. But he wasn't. He was standing in the front hall with a big smile on his face. Hi, girls, he called out. How was school? Learn anything good? What's two plus two? Eight? Bean giggled. Sometimes her dad was a goofball. Four, she said. Wrong again. He slapped his head. You want a snack? I made banana bread. You did? How come? Bean said. Because I make great banana bread, duh. He said, bustling toward the kitchen. He was awfully cheerful. Bean put her hands on her hips. What's going on around here, Dad? Why are you so happy? Dad stopped bustling towards the kitchen. I'm glad to see you, he said. Bean looked at him. I am. Then he said, it was quiet around here today. Mom says it's peaceful when we're gone, said Bean. I don't like peaceful. I was lonely, her dad admitted. Bean laughed. Hey, you're just like me. Her dad had been so lonely that he had made three loaves of banana bread. He cut two thick slices and poured two glasses of milk and brought them to the kitchen table. Then he sat down to watch Bean and Ivy eat. What are you guys up to this afternoon, he asked. The girls exchanged glances. It's a secret said Bean slowly. If she told him he might want to help and that would ruin the youngest paleontologist's record. He was old. But by the end of the after afternoon, you'll know. The end of the afternoon? He looked disappointed. Oh, I felt sorry for him. Thanks for the banana bread, she said. It was delicious. You're welcome. He picked up the newspaper. See you later, said Bean, getting up. She stopped and turned back to the table. There might be kids coming out, some kids coming over later, she said, just in the yard. He was reading. Kids, great, he said. I'm kind of wondering how many people are going to show up at their house. All right, you know what? We are about out of time, so I'm not going to start the next chapter. But Ivy and Bean are going out to dig up some bones, and they've invited their class over. Um, I don't know what's going to happen when they, when they get... You know, when they dig all these up and find out. I, I still don't think they're dinosaur bones, but maybe they are. Maybe it's a big surprise for all of us. Uh, so, come back tomorrow and we will find out more about these mysterious bones in Bean's backyard. Uh, in the meantime, you know, keep reading. Stay safe, stay healthy. And Daisy Ray and I will see you tomorrow. Thanks. Bye.